Good morning, church. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Before we hop into worship, I wanted to encourage us with a scripture. Uh, Psalm 34, verse 1 says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. We have an active choice to make today in giving our praise to God. So why don't you stand up wherever you are? We're going to lift our hands. We're going to lift our voices. We're going to give him our loudest praise this morning. Why don't you join with us today? Come now, Lord, 
Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Hey, found family, I have a thought for you, especially during this quarantine time. It's easy for us to get up, get out of bed, make breakfast, and then realize that some four or five hours later, we're still in our PJs. We've gone about our day and we've forgotten how to dress for the occasion. We've developed a bad habit and that's just being comfortable. The same is true with our relationship with Christ. We can become comfortable if we don't put God's word into practice. So let's put it into practice right now. I'm gonna read from James chapter one, verses 19 through 26. Some encouraging but challenging words from James in how to not forget what God's word commands us to do. Here it is starting in verse 19. Understand this, my brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word, you must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and that's God's word, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you've heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious, but you don't control your tongue, you are only fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. A challenging message for us today. So now that we've heard God's word, let's pray about it. God, I pray that everyone who's heard my voice now would hear your voice and hear your Holy Spirit leaning into their life. Lord, would you move towards them with compassion? Lord, grant them peace during this time. Lord, let them understand that you alone can fulfill the desires of their heart and they don't have to lean on anything else. Lord, no other person can give them what you can. God, the eternal hope that we have that's found in you and you alone. God, and we stand in the promise of your word, Lord, that if we not only hear it, but we put it into practice, that it will transform our lives and bring us closer to you. Now, God, for everyone who hears the sound of my voice, God, bless them, keep them safe, bless their families and their loved ones financially, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Lord, we love you. We give you honor and praise for what you're going to do today and throughout our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Fountain family. Pastor Russ here with Pastor Reuben. How's it going, everybody? It's another Sunday to worship, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Here we're on the couch, and you're on your couch. Exactly. Um, you know, I was thinking the longer that this goes on, the more I miss our church family. Yeah, I was driving by the church the other day, and I just miss being there every day and being able to be with everybody and, and everything. Yeah, we're looking forward to when we can gather together again. We don't know when that'll be, but so thankful that we have this way to connect. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think during this COVID-19, staying connected, since we can't be in the church, is just more important than ever. Absolutely. So absolutely. Pastor Ruben is our connections pastor, life groups, uh, missions. He does so much here. And I just want him to share with you, again, some ways that we can stay connected. Yeah, absolutely. We would love for you to be able to, to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and be able to, to like those pages. We even have a YouTube channel that you can be able to watch all of our, uh, our messages as well. Um, so if you want to subscribe to that. But what I really want you to do, um, if you would take the time just to be able to download the Fountain of Life app, that'd be an amazing way for you to connect. Uh, on there, there's some really great features where you can watch all of our messages. Um, you can also give via the app. But on top of that, there's even a, a Bible plan in there as well for you Excellent. to read through the Bible in a year. Um, so just uh, to be able to equip you as much as possible and stay connected with what's going on the Fountain of Life events that we have are even on there. So that's really just one of the best ways for you to stay connected with us at the Fountain of Life here. And we would love for you to be able to do that. It's easy to do because I was able to do it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we have a couple of things we want to share with you before we go into the message today. And you probably have seen the video uh, that Pastor Matt and I did. Yeah. Uh, we just started a brand new outreach called Get Boxes of Hope, getboxesofhope.com. Yeah. It's, it, it's a new outreach to where we're partnering with Convoy of Hope yep. and able to provide boxes of hope. It may be cleaning supplies. It may be groceries exactly. for people who have COVID-19, who are quarantined, yep. or maybe someone that's out of work and just needs 
a box of hope. Just something a little extra. Something a little extra. And so it's just our joy to help um, meet the needs of those in our local community. You can get more information by just going to getboxesofhope.com. Fountain of Life will show up as one of the partners. Exactly. And if you would like to give to it, you it, it, just click on Fountain of Life. It'll take you to our website. And you can do one of two things. Yep. If you need a box, if you need something, we want to be here for you. Just follow the instructions and you can receive a box. But if you don't need anything and you have some extra, yeah. you can give to, to Boxes of Hope. It's part of our Kingdom Builders exactly. initiative. Exactly. And so we, we hope that, we hope that you'll, you'll jump in and partner with us on that. Yeah. One other thing we really want to share with you and we're so excited about is we're getting ready to launch our life group, next life group semester. Yeah. And Pastor Ruben, I want you to tell them all about it. Yeah, I am so very excited for this life group semester. We are going to be kicking off on May 4th. So if you want to write it down in your calendar that week, starting the week of May 4th, we're going to be kicking off our new uh, message series and our life groups. We're going to be going through the seven I am statements of Jesus. It's going to be absolutely incredible. We are so very excited for it. We have already had so many people from your call from last week. We have already had so many people sign up as life group facilitators and we don't want to stop yet. No, no, so no, no. If you want to be a life group facilitator, if you are a part of the Fountain of Life, we would love for you to be able to do that. Um, we're, if you're nervous, scared that uh, I don't know if I can do that, I don't know how, what it looks like for to lead one of those groups, don't worry. We have a training that we'll do. Uh, we're going to be doing in the next couple days from when this video appears for you. Um, and I would love to be able to connect with you just a little bit more, um, be able to answer any questions that you may have, uh, and then get you ready for this uh, this series. Um, we I promise you, it is not as difficult as you might be thinking that it is. In fact, it's going to be easier than ever. Exactly. We're, exactly. There'll be virtual life groups, you of course. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your home. <laughs> you can do it in your pajamas. Exactly, exactly. Zoom life groups, right? Just That's everything right. on a computer. Everything is via Zoom that we're going to be doing, using that platform, um, and, and just being able to discuss who Jesus is. Yeah. Um, we would love awesome. for you to join in on that. So if you are interested in doing this, will you do me the favor and just email info at lcmail.org. And just let me know, it's just your name, your number, uh, phone number, um, and, and email address. So that way we can be able to, to contact you and be able to get you into one of these trainings and get you ready for this incredible thing. It's going to be amazing. We want you to sign up. Our goal is to have 100 life group leaders That's right. when we That's launch. Right. Yeah. And we're a little more than halfway there already. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we invite your partnership with that. Before we go into the message today, uh, we want to give you an opportunity to give. You know, I was thinking... Uh, what I wanted to share with you, and one verse just um, came into my mind. And when Jesus was asked the greatest commandment, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Yeah. You know, Pastor Ruben, I think that when our love for God really has a high priority in our life, mm -hmm. giving just becomes so natural. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm not asking you today to give because the church needs your help or uh, because it's, you know, the law and the Bible or anything right. like that. Right. Uh, could we give today just out of our love for Jesus? That's good. What are some ways people can give? Yeah, um, you can give by mailing something into the church address. That's going to appear right at your uh, bottom of your screen right there. Um, you can give by texting. That number is also at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can give via the app, like we were talking about just a little bit before, and then you can always give online as well at flcnj.org. Any of those ways, it'd be amazing for us to, to just worship God through our giving. In just a, in just a moment after we pray, uh, some ways will show up on the screen again, as Pastor Ruben has said, that you can give. But let's take this time. We've already had a time of singing, yeah. and we're going to hear the message, but this time is no less time of worship. Absolutely. And I want to thank you again for your faithfulness in giving, whether it's online or, or through the mail or through the app. Thank you for your continued faithfulness and your partnership. I'd like to take a moment and just pray for you right there in your home. God, I thank you for your church. I thank you for your people. I thank you for their love for you and for one another and for their great faithfulness to your kingdom. And as we give our tithes and kingdom builders offering, Father, I pray that your people, your sons and daughters, would live under an open heaven. I pray the blessing of the Lord would come upon them and overtake them, Lord, and bless them in every way. Bless their families. Bless their finances. Bless their health, Lord, I pray. 
But may the blessing of the Lord be rich upon each of their lives as they right now give to your kingdom and to the work of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you as you give. Well, it's time for the Word, and I know you're going to be blessed by it. I've asked Pastor Johnny, our Trenton campus pastor, to bring the message today. You know, I, I called him the other day, and I, I asked him if he, would, if he would be willing to bring the Word and preach this Sunday, and he said, oh man, he says, I'm lit. <laughs> and the Lord had really put something on his heart, and he had experienced something in the past week as well that he wants to share with you. I want you to get ready to hear the message. He's titled it, Don't Miss the Moment. Listen and be blessed today. Hey, good morning, church family. I just want to first off thank Pastor Russ for allowing me to come and share what the Lord has put on my heart. I thank God for, for him. And uh, just wanted to share what God has been doing in my life this morning. You see, about... Two weeks ago, my wife and I finally moved into our new house. We did the whole quarantine move thing. And we have been working on this house for about five months, trying to renovate it uh, so that our family could move in. And it's been a wild ride, to say the least. But now we're finally here. And I remember it was a Wednesday evening. And my wife looks at me as we're sitting down on our couch. And she said, now that we've moved in, what do we do now? And to be honest with you, uh, in my mind, I'm going, I want to sit down, watch a movie, eat some popcorn, and relax. But that's not what she meant. She meant that if this season is over, the whole renovating season, what are we going to do in this new season? And this has really started a wild two and a half weeks for my wife and I of what are we going to do in this season? And then my wife went on and shared what the Lord had put on our heart, that we've been looking inwardly towards ourselves for the past five months because we had to. We were forced to. We had to do uh, all of these things to be able to move into our house and, and renovate and do floors and put new bathrooms. And we had to do all of these things. But now that that season has passed, we can start looking outwardly again, blessing others again, doing things for other people again. So what are we gonna do now? And she shared with me this question, what will we do in this season? And I just wanna share with you what God has done with that specific question. You see, church, I'm, I don't need to be the first guy to tell you that we are in a season. It is a wild season. It is a season that you and I have never experienced before. I dare say it's a season that every single one of us watching this morning are in. We are in a quarantined season. We are in a shut in, shut down season. This is what we find ourselves in. The question is not, are we in a season? The question really is, what do we do in this season? Now, if you're taking notes this morning, as I'm sure many of you are, right there in your homes, the title for the message, as Pastor Russ shared with you, is don't miss the moment. Don't miss the moment. I want to take you to the scripture. It's found in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 17, and it says this, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Man, I love this. You know, the whole of Ephesians 5 talks about what it looks like to be a follower of Christ. Right? In fact, the, the beginning of Ephesians 5 says, be imitators of God. 
Then verses 15 through 17 tell us how we should live. Carefully, wisely, not missing the moments that have been given to us by God, but taking up every single opportunity. You see, Paul was telling us that fools waste the moment, fools waste the opportunities, fools waste the days that they've been given. Man, I don't want to be like a fool, but I want to be as a follower of Christ. You see, there's a season of opportunity that stands in front of you and I, looking us right in the face. But what will we do with it? What will we do in this season? And I want to just encourage you today to not miss the moment. But before we move on, before we begin to talk about how we don't miss the moment, I want to encourage you today that if you feel like you've missed the opportunity so far, like if, you, if you've spent the past six weeks watching Netflix or chilling on your couch or you've wasted this quarantine season, I want to encourage you today. Let me remind you that our God is a God of redemption. Our story has always been one of redemption. Believers in Christ our entire lives have been the redemption story. We were raised from death to life. We were brought from darkness to the light. Our story, our lives are that of redemption. And Paul here reminds us of that. You see, in the New Living Translation, it says that make the most of every opportunity. But then in the New King James, it actually says redeeming the time. You see, church, Time can mean two different things. It can mean time, like right now the time is blank or hour upon hour. But it can also mean the time, which actually means a definite season. Like you and I are in a definite season right now. We are in a specific time, a moment, a season of opportunity. This is, is what I want to talk to you about today. The season that is set before us and what will we do with it? You see, Paul here says, for us to redeem the time. You see, redeem means to take back, regain possession of, take hold of what was lost. That although we may have wasted this season of opportunity so far, we now have a choice to redeem it to make the most of this opportunity, to not miss it, to take it back, to use it for the glory of God. We may not be able to change what we've done in the past six or seven weeks. We may not be able to uh, redo what we've done in the past, but what we can do is change what we're going to do and change the future and move forward from here. Let's redeem the time together. Redeem the season together. So how do we not miss the moment? How do we make the most of this season? I just want to share with you my experience and what God has been doing in me. And I'm just bearing witness of who He is and what He's done. But the first thing is spend time with Jesus. You know, this may seem elementary for some of us, and we may say, well, of course, I'm supposed to spend time with the Lord. But really, I encourage you today to spend some time with the Lord. Take this time that we have, this season where many of us are not actually going into work or we can't go out as we normally would and to shop or to see friends. But let's take this time and spend it with the Lord. You know, I I love sports. Anybody who knows me knows this. (laughs) And I hate that sports are canceled. I love to watch them. I love to put them on. Even I watch them often with my kids. And it's a blast for me to watch sports. But I also love that sports are canceled. Some of you right now are going to try to throw some tomatoes at me. Uh, (laughs) 
right to your TV screen. But hear me out. I actually love that they're canceled because it's allowed me to take some time that I normally would spend on watching sports and spend it with the Lord. You know, often I put on Sports Center or Good Morning Football in the morning as I'm getting ready for the day. But now I'm able to put on worship music. I'm able to put on the Word and listen to what the Word of God says. Spend time with Jesus during this season of opportunity that we all find ourselves in. You see, church, God is calling people to know him in a much deeper level and to learn what it means to put him first. Let's not waste this season. You know, I love, uh, I'm, I'm not only the Trenton campus pastor, but I'm also the young adults pastor here at Fountain. And I love some of our young adults, what they're doing. They're finding different ways to spend time with Jesus, but then also bring others into the fold to share what the Lord spoke to them during their time with the Lord. They've started Bible reading plans together. They started doing devotionals together. This is the church. This is what we're supposed to do. Make the most of every opportunity that is put in front of you. Don't miss the moment. You see, I understand that church buildings all around the country are closed, but that's even more the reason why our Bibles need to be open. Let's spend some time with Jesus, even today. Even today, don't waste the moment. The first thing we need to do is spend some time with Jesus, and the second thing is we need to seek the Lord for what He wants us to do. See, verse 17 of Ephesians 5 says, Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Can I say this to you today? That if you are spending time with Jesus, He will show you exactly what He wants you to do. He is not trying to hide it from you. He wants you to know what He wants you to do. So what things is God calling you to do today? What does he want from you? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever said, I just don't have time for blank? (laughs) Or maybe you've said, if I just had more time, I would this. You and I have been given time to do this like never before, to do things that we've only dreamed of or longed for or said that we've wanted to do. Don't miss the moment. Maybe God is calling you to begin exercising. I have a friend of mine who just texted me that they bought a treadmill so that they can start running. Something they've wanted to do for years but never had the time to do. Maybe he wants you to start exercising. Maybe, maybe the Lord is calling you to become a life group facilitator. Man, I, I'll, I'll put that in there as well. Maybe that's where the Lord is calling you. Man, being a life group facilitator has been one of the most exciting things that I've been able to do at Fountain of Life. I love it. I enjoy it so much. And, and I, I believe that God is raising people up that in this season of opportunity, God is calling you to become a life group facilitator at this time. Maybe the Lord is calling you to bless others in ways that you haven't before. Maybe he wants you to give something. Maybe he wants you to write a letter to somebody. Maybe he wants you to tell someone that just that you're thinking about them. Maybe God is calling you to spend some time with family. You know, as I said, I love sports. And most evenings were filled with watching them. But now that they're quote unquote canceled, I'm able to spend some time with my kids and play superheroes. God is allowing us to rebuild families. Maybe the Lord is calling you to reconnect with a family member, to reach out, to rebuild, to redeem a relationship that's been lost. Maybe in this season, God is calling you to forgive, to forgive someone that you thought you could never forgive. Don't miss the moment. 
I want to share with you a unique experience that I've had during this season and where all of this has come from. Through my time spending it with Jesus, the Lord started to reveal some things that I needed to do. And one of them being that I needed to rebuild a relationship that's been lost for many years. It's been broken. And the Lord had shared with me that he wanted me to reach out to my dad. Something that I really didn't think about. I really didn't want to do at this time. And I just was coasting. And, and I felt like the Lord wanted me to reach out to my dad. And so I said, okay, Lord, well, how do you want me to do it, right? If the excuses come of like, do I call him? Do I text him? All these things. And the Lord was just like, just, just reach out. Just Facebook message him and reach out. And, uh, and so I did. And I was able to reach out to my dad during this time, during this season of opportunity. And man, dad, if you're watching, it was so good catching up with you. And I'm so glad that I was able to reach out to my dad. And I believe that God used that for his glory. You see, it was out of spending time with my dad that I was able to reconnect with him and rebuild this relationship that it has been broken. Church, it was out of my time spending it with the Lord that he showed me what he wanted me to do. But can I tell you, it doesn't stop there. You know, what good is knowing what God wants you to do if you never do anything with it? It doesn't just stop at knowing what he wants. You and I to do today. But we also have to, number three, do it. Do it. You see, the first thing we need to do is spend time with Jesus. And then we need to seek him for what he wants us to do. But we also need to do it. Just do it. Whatever he's calling you to do, do it. No matter how hard it may seem, just do it. See, I've always loved this slogan by Nike, just do it. For me, it's just been an empowering force in my life. It's been, it's been harsh at times, especially when I wanted to first start running and I thought of every excuse of why I couldn't do that thing. And I just felt in my mind, I heard it playing over and over again, just do it. And just like this past weekend when I wanted to reach out to my dad, but every excuse came up of why I couldn't or a why I should not. And all I heard was just do it. You and I are called to something during this season of opportunity. I want to encourage you to just do it. You see, the owners of Nike, I looked up why uh, they coined this slogan. And one of the owners of Nike said this. He said, I wanted something that reached the woman who was getting on a treadmill for the first time. And the marathon runner who was about to run his 100th marathon. And I wanted it to meet them exactly where they're at. Just do it. You see, church family, whether the Lord is calling you to give $5 or 5000 or he wants you to reach out to a friend or a family member. He wants you to restore a relationship or even just begin the stages of forgiveness. Whatever it is, just do it. If the Lord has called you to do something, he is not going to leave you. He's going to be right beside you to do it. You know, I believe that in this season we find ourselves in, this season of opportunity, that if we make the most of it, we will see the world change for the better when everything goes back to quote unquote normal. <laughs> I believe that we're gonna see churches blow up in amazing ways and God do incredible things, even as he's doing now. I believe that what we do in this season, what we sow in this season, we are going to reap in the next. A friend of mine, Gretchen Wilkins, we were on a call the other day and she'll hate me for saying this, but she shared something that was so powerful. And she said, maybe this is the revival that we've been looking for. 
Maybe this is the season we've been searching for as believers. Because during this time, during this season, we have seen more people hear the gospel than ever before. We've seen people reach out to others, relationships restored, dads and moms being dads and moms again. We've seen incredible things happen during this season. Will we make the most of it? Don't miss the moment. I wanna share with you a brief ending of the story with my dad. I reached out, I reached out to my dad and I was able to have the longest conversation that I've ever had with him. I got to know my dad. I got to know his likes, his dislikes, his hobbies. I even got to know his childhood, why he is the way he is. I even found out that my dad used to love playing ice hockey with his friends. I'm like, dude, we're football players. We don't play ice hockey. But I was able to find these things out about my dad. I got to have real conversations with my siblings, with Katie and with Nathan. I got to meet even my nephew, Nathan Bryce, for the first time. Man, this conversation with my dad was priceless. It was amazing. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. It was so good to talk with my dad after all of these years. And you know, it's so easy for us to complain during the season that we find ourselves in. But I just want to encourage you today, church. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this opportunity. Make the most of it. Now, as I close, I just want to ask you a question. What is the Lord asking you to do? What is he asking you to do? What does he want you to give? What does he want you to give up? What does he want to restore? Who does he want you to reach out to? What decision is he wanting you to make? And I know the feeling because I've heard preachers preach this on so many occasions. And I knew that what God was calling me to do was restore the relationship with my dad. But I kept taking the easy road and saying, well, I'm going to reach out to the friend that maybe we had a falling out or, okay, Lord, I'll give an offering. But God was saying, no, I want you to restore the relationship with your dad. And during this season, the Lord has led me to do that. You can feel it in your chest right now. Exactly what God wants you to do. See, Pastor Matt, before I even came up here, he shared in James when it says, don't be just hearers of the word, but doers of it. That's what you and I are called to. And I understand that it may not be all sunshine and rainbows. I get that. I understand that hard conversations are going to have to be had. I understand that forgiveness is going to have to happen. Pride is going to have to be set down. Trust in the Lord is going to have to happen. Seeking the Lord is going to have to happen. But the God of the universe is calling you and I to redeem the time, to change the future, to seize the opportunity. Don't miss the moment. Man, at this time, I'm gonna pitch it back to Pastor David and he's gonna lead us in a closing song, more like Jesus. And uh, I hope it blesses you. And I hope this blessed you today. Let us not just hear the word of the Lord, but do something with it. And after Pastor David uh, leads this song of worship to the Lord, I'm going to come right back and I just want to pray for you today before we end our time together. God bless you guys.
Wow, wasn't that a powerful song? Make us more like Jesus. I believe that as we spend some time with the Lord, even just today or this week, He's gonna allow us to become more like Him and do what He wants us to do. So right now, I just wanna pray for you and pray a prayer blessing over your life. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for each and every person who's watching. Lord, or, or the, the ones who will, who will watch later, Lord, that you would continue 
to bless their households, Lord, that you would show them your love and your grace, Lord, that you would keep them safe, allow them to use wisdom during this time, Lord God, during this season that we find ourselves in, Lord. And God, right now, as you're speaking to each and every one of us, Lord God, that you would uh, show us exactly what you want us to do during this season and how you want to use it for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.